Devin Pike with the Dallas International Film Festival. A, a phenomenal slate of films in the documentary competition at the festival this year. One of them is Rich Hill, looking at rural America and the struggle for three different brothers to either stay in their community in rural Missouri or leave to go to greener pastures or what's perceived as greener pastures as the case may be. Tracy Tragos, one of the two directors of the film is here. First off, phenomenal documentary. Thanks for bringing it to the festival. Well, thank you for having me. It's really an honor to be here. Talk a little bit about how you came to find this group of brothers, which winds up being the emotional crux of the film, and um, whether or not they were even open to being the subject of a documentary. Yeah, I mean, well, Rich Hill is my family hometown, and it's where my father grew up, um, and I spent every summer as a kid there, so it was a place of you know deep connection. So I was sort of an insider and also sort of an outsider, um, but I was known, and so when we decided to make this film, we knew that we wanted to tell the story of families who were struggling, um, but we didn't know what the angle would be. You know, we didn't know who the voice of our story would be. So um, we cast a rather wide net. And these boys in particular, we met them in different ways, but I think what struck us most deeply is that they wanted to tell their story. And when we went home with them and met their families, the families wanted to tell their story. Uh, and in large part, we felt that their stories weren't being told. So that combination of factors uh, really made it clear that this should be the heart of our story. There are so many of these little communities in Missouri. My wife's family is from there, so you, you drive through a ton of them as you're heading to the Lake of the Ozarks and all of the little communities around there. Roach uh, sticks out in my head for that, but that could be any town in America. and. While it seems that it's cut off from the rest of the country, there's still a lot. There's still a, a lattice work of connection to Springfield or Kansas City or any of those other um, communities like that. When you're putting the film together, were you looking to make sure that that connection was still visible, even though it's still that small town feel? Well, I mean, one of the things that we felt um, when we started to get to know these families and spend as much time with them as we did was that, yes, they were living in poverty. Yes, they were struggling, um, but it, they were also in America. And so it's a strange kind of push and it, it, it's, a, it's a strange reality. I mean, they, um, they're aware of how much people have. You know, they, they are near cities. They are, um, you know, they see magazines at the newsstand or are on Facebook. Um, so it's a, it's a relative poverty. Um, and they also, you know, have dreams that are very much like everybody else's dreams in America, except their roadmap for how to get there is, is unclear. How long of a process did you work on the film, uh, just from a shooting aspect of it? Because there's a lot of great footage, and it, it couldn't have just been like a three-day shoot, obviously. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, we spent, um, you know, we shot for oh, about 20 months. Um, but in that time, I and mean, we have 450 hours of footage, um, and, and just spent a lot of time with the camera rolling. I mean, at, at least 100 shoot days. Um, and you know we'd go back every month or six weeks and spend several days, and it was important for us to be patient. I think that's you know, sometimes it, folks want to get in and get out, and are somewhat mercenary in getting the story. And we wanted to do something different, and we really wanted um, the kids to have an opportunity to be heroes and to tell their their truth. As it as it was. So, what was the comfort level of them at, at of the family at first having your crew in there um, shooting their lives? Well, I was about to tell you, your crew <laughs> is much bigger than my crew. <laughs> so, I mean, it was me and it was Andrew behind the camera, my amazing co-director and first cousin. So, uh, it was just the two of us. And so, it's not. I hope that we're not, you know, terribly intimidating. We really didn't light anything ever. Um, so. Uh, it wasn't, um, you know, I, don't, I, I think it probably would have been harder had we had a lot more stuff. Um, but honestly, within the families, their trust um, 
was pretty quickly earned, I felt. I mean, I hope we never did anything to, you know, to violate that trust. Um, so I think, you know, we were trustworthy, but they really did trust us, and I was honored, you know, by that trust. Has the families, have the families had a chance to see the final product of the film? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And that's part of the trust that I hope, you know, as a documentary filmmaker, you can't, you know, number one, just get in and get out, but also then make your film and kind of drop, drop them. Um, we shared the film with them before we shared it with audiences. Uh, we shared it kind of one-on-one -on -one and, and talked about it. And to be honest, I was so nervous about that. I mean, so nervous. But their reaction was better than anything I could have ever hoped uh, or imagined. I mean, they really got behind it. I think in large part feel empowered by it. Felt like we told the truth. We didn't sugarcoat it, but we also didn't, you know, put them down. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're really proud of it. And that really, I, there's, there is no one in the film who has, you know, reacted negatively to it. So. I'm curious what the reactions are when you're screening it for festival audiences, for example, and the Q and A's afterwards. Yeah, it, it it's a moving film because you, you look at it and you say, well, it's so far removed from my urban experience. But the reality is, the vast majority of people in America are one paycheck away from an absolute disaster. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, at its heart, we're we're telling a very very personal story. And we're telling it from the perspective of adolescents, and then by extension, you know, they're the families that surround them. And I hope that people will respond, and they often do, so it is very gratifying um, that they see themselves in some measure, you know, that it, they see what is universal, and that they're not pushing away the families and saying, you know, oh, these are people that, oh, you know, I don't want to get close to or know or have anything to do with, but that there is some measure of recognition and saying, I understand, or I've been there, or you know, they're not so different from myself. So you know, I, I hope for the most part we've succeeded, and it seems like audience reaction would, would say that, but it's not, it's not an easy film. So I, I, I also recognize that. It, it moves people, but it can be hard for people as well. For, for such a small crew, the, the shots that you get, I mean, obviously you're familiar with it because of it, Rich Hill is your hometown. And would you have been able to have done a project like this in a community that you didn't have that familiarity? I, you know, I, I like to think that filmmakers can can explore whatever, you know, what whatever interests them. I think what particularly drove Andrew and me to tell this story about this place which really could be any place, you know, in America that you drive by or fly over, um, was because of our connection to it, because we loved it. I mean, it was a place for me that I just loved going to visit. Uh, I loved my grandparents who lived there, and they're no longer living, and my connection to the place had kind of um, been lost, and this was in part my way of trying to get connected again. But, you know, I do think as a filmmaker, you have to think about, you know, what is the story that is not going to be told if I don't tell it? What is the story that I am most qualified to tell? What is the, you know, my little window on the world? And I think, you know, this film probably wouldn't have been made had Andrew and I not, you know, this story wouldn't have been told. So we were particularly qualified to give a window into Rich Hill. And somebody else might be particularly qualified to give a window into, you know, the place that they have deep roots. I think it's almost a duty for a filmmaker if you know that that story might not even be there 20 years from now because the dynamic of the town will change. And we've seen communities drop off the map because the infrastructure has finally collapsed. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's, a, it's, it's a, a, the job of every filmmaker or documentarian to capture as much of that as possible. Yeah, yeah. No, I would, I would agree. I mean, it's, it's not an easy job. You know, nobody's... Uh, you don't have a boss who's telling you what to do. I think it's more of an internal compass that says, you know, I need to do this, and then, you know. Well, at that point, your boss is time. Because, That's it's true. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. The film is Rich Hill. You can catch it here at the Dallas International Film Festival. Find out all the information at dallasfilm.org. Is there a, a, a website that you have um, set up for the film itself? We do. It's richhillfilm.com. Okay. 
check that out and please come back and see all of the films here at the festival in the documentary bracket. They're all amazingly challenging and you will be amazed at what these filmmakers are able to accomplish. Thank you so much for bringing us to the festival and thanks for coming to Dallas. Yes, thank you. 